Okay, Jeff Davis back here at the Egypt Valley Country Club, and I am joined by my friend Mike LeFaber, fellow 1992 graduate of uh, Calvin. Mike is uh, one of our gift officers in the advancement uh, division and specifically tied in with athletics. And of course, he was also one of the key pieces of Calvin's 1992 National Championship men's basketball team. So just getting back to the end of that, uh, your reflections on 1992, or maybe just uh, playing four years of men's basketball I was there for almost all of those games in 92, and boy, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? A lot of fun, a lot of great memories. Um, you know, in addition to the basketball and the, you know, the success we happened to have that year, um, one of the great things about playing athletics at Calvin is the relationships you form, right? right? So just the, the this outing that we're at today provides an opportunity for some of my old teammates to come back, and, and we just spent the weekend together uh, playing some golf up north. And and so, uh, you know, those are, it's over 30 years ago now, but those relationships are as tight as they've ever been. So it's, it's a lot of fun and a really meaningful part of life, so... So that 1992 team, uh, I think it was 31 and one, only loss was to North Park. I know those Viking folks out there always like to bring that one up and so forth and so forth. But um, yeah, what a, what a tremendous run. Your starting five in particular really fit, the pieces fit so well. I mean, obviously Steve Hondred was the All-American center, but you had a power forward and Mark Lodewijk was a high flyer, could get a lot of rebounds. Your role was to maybe be around the basket for some boards and whatnot, but you could shoot that three-pointer when the three-pointer was just starting to get in vogue, you know, a stretch forward, if you will. And then we'll see Matt Harrison here, the savvy point guard. Um, he's one of our sponsors at today's uh, athletics golf outing. And then one of the most explosive Arguably one of the top shooting guards that Calvin's ever had. Chris Canooster was one of your other starters there. Um, just that starting five, uh, you guys just fit together so well, didn't you? Yeah, it uh, it it did really come together really nicely that we we could we complemented each other really mm -hmm. well, I think. And of course, Steve was the linchpin around a lot of it and, and allowed coach to do some different things, including having a six foot seven guy shooting three pointers yeah. in 1992. It was more common today. But um, but yeah, like you said, Mark Lodewijk was super athletic and could guard anybody on the floor. And Chris Canooster was only a sophomore that year, but had just enormous potential and athleticism. And then Matt was just the point guard that just made it all happen. He got everybody the ball where they needed it, when they needed it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it just clicked. And, and we had some great great guys off the bench too, BJ Wester and Ryan Stevens and guys like that, that, that were huge contributors for us too. So um, yeah, it was just a special year that everything came together and clicked well, so. So the one uh, instance that a lot of people might remember you for um, in that 1992 season was the national championship game against uh, University of Rochester. You guys won it 62 to 49, but some drama there in the uh, second half. You went out with kind of a nice gash across uh, your forehead right above the eye, so you had to get stitched up. And then we just mentioned Chris Canooster, who a few minutes later tweaked his knee and went out. And as Chris Canooster was taken off, you came out of the locker room kind of like uh, a Rocky scene where you were all bandaged up and you were back on the floor and got a standing ovation. What do you remember about that? A little surreal. Um, yeah. I remember walking out and just seeing Chris on the floor, and you know that wasn't a great feeling. Obviously, yeah. um, my teammates all give me a hard time about it today, right? It was like that kind of that Rocky moment, right? It's just a weird timing that I happened to walk out right at that time, and I'm sure gave the crowd some semblance of release relief that we're not losing everybody yeah um but yeah it was it, it was a it was a unique thing and i get questions you know all this time later i get a lot of questions even today about yeah. that um and still got a little scar under my eyebrow that uh, has, has a memory of it so what um are your mem when, when that final horn goes off and you're the national champs and we've been fortunate to have 11 team national champions now here at Kelvin. Uh, it's just a really unique feeling. What do you remember about it when the horn went off, Kelvin 62, Rochester 49, uh, and the realization that you were the national champs, you know, what, yeah. What, what when what do you remember about that? I think in the moment it's a little surreal, right? Yeah. Is this really happening? Um, and it's a combination of uh, just the exhilaration of it. Um, I mean, the the court was instantly flooded by all our friends and family and everybody who was in the stands. So it was just a massive celebration. 
but I think the and, and it's you know the culmination of all a lot of hard work and practice and things like that. So that's that's a great feeling. But the biggest thing is that you're doing it with your friends, right? Yeah. It was just such a awesome moment. And um, and I referenced you know earlier talk you know, spending time with my old teammates this weekend and stuff. Like we always have that bond now. Yep. Um, we worked really hard at something and we accomplished something that that we were shooting for it in the moment. And it uh, it creates lifelong f- uh, relationships and friendships sure. and all those that I'm very confident will never end. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of that. All of that going on at one time, which is uh, which is uh, just one of these these highs in life that is pretty hard to duplicate in any other setting. Yeah. So. So let's move to the present here because we're talking about friendships, relationships. You're a busy man right now because there is a lot of building that's going on the Kelvin campus in terms of uh, athletics. So talk a little bit about your role and then maybe what you can talk about as far as what we're trying to do as far as building projects in terms of athletics and yep. you know how that's all coming together. Yeah. So my role at Calvin is is director of major gifts and so we have a we have a team of gift officers on campus that that we're raising money for all the different things that happens on campus but um a lot of it is because of my, as we just talked about, my experience with athletics and the relationships I have within athletics that I've be kind of become the lead of anything athletics related. So now, as the school is making major investments in adding football and adding volleyball and acrobatics and tumbling and leveraging what we're doing really well in athletics to help continue to grow the school, um, we need facilities to do that really well. And it's particularly outdoor uh, facilities. What Venord Arena and the Venema Aquatic Center were built um, yeah, 14 years ago now. But it's one of the best venues in Division Three for our indoor sports. We need an outdoor facility to match that, so that our experience for our student athletes um, on the outdoor sports matches that of an indo- of the, our indoor athletes. So, um, it's a heavy lift um, because to to do these things takes resources, obviously. Um, but it, uh, you know, we think that it's it's going to be worth it for not only building quality teams, but for benefiting the whole university, uh, attracting more students to come. Uh, impacting the experience they have as a not just student athletes but the athletes in general for Calvin that it becomes part of their experience to go watch football games on a Saturday afternoon in the fall and things like that things that things that a lot of people the experiences that they're looking for for a college uh, for their four-year experience so um, it's an exciting time it's it's uh, yeah I got plenty going on at the moment but uh, but it's a lot of fun I see a lot of value in it and so it's easy to get excited about it when you yeah. when you really believe in where we're going with it so well and when you have facilities and you have exciting teams I mean you can speak to this but people will come back to a basketball game or a volleyball game and if you've got a nice venue for soccer or for football um, those are opportunities for alumni to come back and those connections then that you're able to um, foster yep. during those i mean that that's pretty key isn't it it is it is yes so yeah I've, I've had a number of comments from people since the football schedule was released i'm I mean, these are people who don't live in west michigan they live in places like california and texas that say i think i'm going to come to grand rapids on september 7 of 2024 yeah. to watch our first football game right there they, they think that's that's pretty neat it's kind of a historic event right? for calvin it in is. our history and so um yeah so th- it's generating a lot of excitement it's re-engaging people who may or may not have had you know, kept their ties strong with Calvin. And so, yeah, we, we want them back on campus. We want them to experience the, uh, the enthusiasm that it's going to bring and the impact that it's going to have on, on campus life. Yep. And so the alumni are a big part of that. So, so final thing on a day, on a day like today, um, you're trying to not only swing the golf club, but maybe, you know, strike up conversations and just connect with those people, you know, the relationships and whatnot, because the support that, Kelvin receives on the athletic side from people that are playing here today is is pretty big, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think we could do it without it, right? It, it's it's uh, it's filling in a lot of the gaps that um, that you don't necessarily cover in your budget, yeah. um, and so it gives our athletic director and our coaches um, a little flexibility. and And what we try to really emphasize is any decision we're making with spending dollars that are raised today, we want it to have something that impacts the student experience. Sure. And so, um, yeah, there there are loads of opportunities to be involved in a day like today, but also involved in um, supporting our individual teams, supporting projects like the ones we were describing with a new football and soccer stadium complex and lacrosse, and so. So, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of ways that we could partner with people and, uh, and we'd be grateful, if, grateful for any conversations around it. Absolutely. Well, we're grateful to have you on uh, board here at Kelvin and we're grateful for all the work that you do. Mike LeFaber, part of the Kelvin Advancement Team and uh, a national champion, 1992. Thanks, Mike. Go Knights. Go Knights.